and welcome to Fraser Bavocious, a regular podcast wherein two Gary's talk about all things ELT. I'm Chris. And I'm Alan. So let's dive in. Today, since it's December, uh, so it's nearly that time of year, uh, we want to discuss our favourite sort of seasonal class ideas, but not just Christmas. We also want to talk about when we do one-off lessons, so those little lessons that get a student's head out of the book for the entire class. And how to handle possible low numbers coming into the holiday season because kids have uh, concerts, sporting events, exams and all of the above on the same day. Uh, So, Chris, you and me have worked together and had some nice Christmas lessons before. What are your favourites? I think I like um, Christmas lessons or as I've also called them, sort of seasonal lessons, because there are other things around the year, aren't there, when um, it's nice to link with something in the calendar. I think it's ones where they take something home, um, especially the younger students. Um, so I've recently done stuff with... Um, I mean, I'm not American, as you can tell from my accent, um, but I recently did something about, with um, Thanksgiving. Um, I think there's obviously a really... The history is another question, but I think in the present day, a festival that's about sort of giving gratitude is a nice thing to talk about with students. Um, and um, all of my students at the age of 18 did a, a, a did a leaf and something that they were thankful for. And I stuck it on and I made it, I got a, I got a massive Thanksgiving tree in my classroom. Um, and my little primary students all made um, from scratch thank you cards for somebody in their life that they took away with them. And I helped them translate what they wanted to say um, into, into English. So I like that idea of using the language to to do something and connecting with with a message and then especially little people having something they can take home with them. I think one of the little people things uh, I quite enjoyed it a few years ago was um, with little teeny tiny people. Uh, We spent, well that's what they are, we spent about a month of classes practicing a song. So then we had it, do you remember this? Then they had it. They all wore green Santa hats because it was an Irish school. And we sang We Are Family with the whole singing and dancing thing that all the parents got to watch, um, which seemed to go down really well. It was good fun. Um, I'm never going to hear that song, We Are Family, without doing those dance moves now. Um, We Are Family, I'm assuming, from a course book, not the famous song. No, it is a song, yeah. It's 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 in. Yeah, it's in... Is box one, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. I've never taught that age group. That's very interesting. <coughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's a similar idea, isn't it, as well? Because it's something that engages with, with home. And I think that's something that's nice that can happen around holidays. Now, whether they be religious holidays like Christmas, for example, or something more secular, it's nice to have that opportunity to connect with home because that's the kind of time when families are coming together outside of the academy. So making that link is nice. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, just getting... Getting them thinking about the deeper messages and stuff, not in any kind of philosophical way, especially if they're if, if they're really young, I think is also a, a good thing to do. Yeah, if they're five, they don't need to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think um, uh, one of the, one of the favourites, especially at Christmas, because a lot you know teachers are under quite a lot of stress and pressure. If someone really does want um, a website that has won some of the Eltons. And um, the guy who does it is on the conference circuit. Uh, Kieran Donaghy has Film English, um, which is a great website for using video in the classroom. And the lesson plans are already done for you. Um, Obviously, depending on your class, it's obviously really good to mix and match uh, the lessons. Um, You can also change the level in them as well. But I find the kids and the adults really love um, some of the videos. And they're quite keen on using... um, John Lewis, is that the name of it? An English John shop? Lewis, the, I have yeah, no the idea British what John Lewis is what, what do they do? I have obviously no idea. Is it a posh shop? <laughs> it's, a, it's a department store. It's a department store. John Lewis, um, also, and it also it's the um, department store wing of um, Waitrose Supermarket. So they have a supermarket and they have also the department store. Oh, um, right. but they make an annual Christmas um, advert that tends to go down really, really well. Um, yeah, it's, it's normally quite a major cultural event these days. Um, but anyway, a couple of a couple of the, their videos, Buster the Boxer and Mog's Christmas Calamity, have always went. Down I love, with, um, I love both Mog's of them. Calamity. Yeah, uh, Buster the it's Boxer brilliant. is probably my favourite because there's a lot of um, 
there's a lot of material you can use with that. So you're spotting all these animals that um, possibly in Spain, some of the some of the kids won't know what they are because you don't really get badgers. Um, right. But yeah, there's, there, there's uh, on Film English, there's quite a lot of really good lesson plans done for you. And then you, you chop and change however you want to use it in the class. I mean, I think also what's good about Film English um, is whether or not you, I mean, they've also got the lesson plans ready, as you say. But I also like it just as the fact that it's a nicely curated selection of short films that you can use. So even if, um, uh, even if you choose not to use the lesson plan that's been put with it, um, it's, you've already got a three or a four minute film that is that is good to go, yeah. um, that you can use with students. And maybe you have other ideas about what you want to do with it. Um, I mean, I, th- I find his, his plans are really good, um, solid for getting off the ground. I mean, I think sometimes you don't need, don't need as long for activities. depends on your group, of course, and that's, that's where you need to be um, adapting, obviously, the material you're finding. Um, and, and, yeah, there, there, is, there is quite a lot of just quality material there that is just free to use it's quite it's uh, there is a lot of just really good i mean short films yeah they're really cool mm, exactly and i mean in the same and in the same token um with older and more advanced students um i mean it's, it seems stupid to say it but there is ted talks um and obviously there are no lesson plans attached to that um well there is there is now there's there's a website uh was it ted talks and elt or something uh, there, is, there is. Then I swallow my words and I thank you for pointing it out to me. Now I, <laughs> that makes my life a little bit easier. Um, oh, sorry, it's ed.ted.com. So that's ed. We'll put that in the show notes, shall we? .com. Yeah. So lessons worth sharing instead of ideas worth sharing. Yeah. Yeah. That go in the show notes. I'm. Um, I honest. Well, to be fair, I honestly don't think the lesson plans are that great in that. I don't think. I mean, it's it's made. Um, it's 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 like Wikipedia. It's made by anybody who wants to make it. Um, but I wouldn't. There there are interesting things. things to talk about. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah. think there's much. There's not much. You have to make it more of a discussion than what's right. there. Whereas, um, film film English. If you want a ninety minute class, you can follow that structure, and they are very exactly. good. Yeah, I mean, obviously on TED Talks as well, you can search for the for the length. Um, so you can find the the five minute videos, yeah, um, and use that for, um, by by topic and use that to structure with you with your class. I recently used one on sound with my C twos, um, to do with perception and sound, and it was really interesting. Um, and also, there's one. I mean, this was actually one of the ones that the keynote series uses. That's where my inspiration came from. Um, but yeah, it was really nice. Um, um, because because John Lewis has become like a cultural thing in the last ten years or so, even though we don't even have them in Ireland or Spain. Um, so every, every time somebody asks me what 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 does that company do, I sit there and go, oh, I have no idea. Um, I had, I like to obviously put a wee bit of Irishness into them um, and show some of the Guinness adverts because Guinness used to be quite famous for um, their Christmas ads and just sort of the very artistic nature of the adverts. I think the one with right. or, with uh, the heavy waves that turned into horses galloping on a beach won quite a lot of awards. Um, but with teens, and let's see if the podcast can continue with my voice, with teens and even the younger ones. So we watched a few of these last year and then... In groups of five, made their own advert, which was really oh, nice. entertaining. So you have to give them you have to give them quite a lot of setup, right? So they've seen some of the John Lewis ones. They've seen is it cooperative, and they've seen a couple of the Guinness ones at Christmas um, on the screen. So they know the kind of structure. They know how to get a point across. And the Christmas mm. advert are always a wee bit. Uh, how would you say it? They're always inducing certain kind of emotions. Is the most diplomatic way I can word it. Yeah, I think I don't think they're diplomatic. I think that's exactly right. Um, yeah, that's what they're for. Um, <clears throat> so, so I got the kids and the teens to sort of. I give them about ten minutes. Here's a structure. Get a wee story going. Your performance mm-hmm. has to be all five of you. You've ninety seconds. Right, ten minutes. Go plan it. Do it. Impressive. And yeah. um, the outcome was unbelievable. Like. Uh, well, that teen class I did it with because we had been we had a running joke by Christmas about um, dead penguins, which is a really long story, which I'm not going to go into. Um, so we 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 had we had penguins sort of fighting back against the 
evil scientists. Um, the, the kids, the kids were um, a dog and a postman that hated each other all year round. But then, um, as you can hear, my dog in the background. But then they became friends at Christmas, that kind of thing. Aww, so um, really sweet. it went on pretty well. And you know, and also talking about the different levels and things, you can really put in the. Um, you can put some obviously language input into that as well. Um, in terms of the kinds of languages used in advertising, the persuasive language, the emotive language, um, the barking of dogs in the background. Oh, sorry, no, that's not <laughs> part of um, uh, advertising. Um, but no, no, that's, yeah, that's you, can really, postman, yeah. <laughs> you know, you can really focus in the uh, the language input as well um, on on that one. Right. Speaking of language input, but out of the books, I recently did this class with my ten year olds, um, where I elicited Christmas nouns, Christmas objects. Um, got them then to match them with collocations, um, match them with verbs, excuse me, so that we have, you know, build a snowman, write a Christmas card, wrap a present. And uh, that was in the one... Uh, one Christmas lesson. lexical quite... chunk, that's pretty good. Yeah, well, exactly. Um, we have quite a short lesson, so I had one focusing on those lexical chunks. And then the second lesson in the week, I taught them the structure I'm looking forward to. Um, and then they built, they built, I like that word, built sentences um, using the chunks. Um, and they also put <coughs> the causes in. Um, and then um, they made a discussion. Nice. And the students talked about what they were looking forward to at Christmas and the reasons why. Um, nice. Which is very nice. Um, I think that's one of those things I always make sure my students uh, do before I ask them. It's like, always give me a reason why. Mm, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Does their head in, yeah. Um, even when, <laughs> even with little ones, even with uh, adults and all that, um, because a couple of people do like to refer to Christmas as silly season when something's going to be extreme. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, have you ever used Let's Dance Christmas videos in class? Uh, I have not. Oh, I love Christmas videos. Uh, so Let's Dance, for anybody who isn't aware, is freely available on YouTube. I think it's a games console game um, where there's the outline of either a person or people and they dance on screen and the object of the game is you follow along. Um, but right. there is Crazy Santa Dance, there is um, Slade's Christmas Song and there's a few others. Um, the crazy Santa dance is about two and a half minutes long. So instead of doing like a little brain break of just talking, get everybody up and get dancing to the, you know, the Let's Dance Crazy Santa Christmas, which is always really good fun because it's like Hawaiian Christmas and then he's, you know, 70s dancer Christmas and then he's all these like crazy different um, genres. <laughs> all, in, all in about two and a half minutes. It's really, really funny. I even got the advanced adults doing it one time. Um, the important thing is the teacher does it too. If, <laughs> if, the, if the teachers, if the teachers just stand in there and you've got ten or twelve people um, dancing, it doesn't really look right. Uh, but especially with teenagers, if the teacher does it, the students will do it too. So just to, just for the, just to confirm, then, so this is less about language input and more about having a bit of crack, cr Christmas. having a crazy moment in the middle of the lesson. No, no harm in. Having a wee bit of crack, getting everybody up, having a laugh, yeah. Team effort. Well, we know, well, absolutely. I mean, we know the importance anyway of relationship building with students and that, that kind of thing, laughing together is a nice way of doing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, especially if the teacher is deliberately <clears throat> bad. I wouldn't have to try. <laughs> oh, no, there's no effort. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the, um, the teens and the older groups, um, maybe the ones who are preparing exams, um, do you, what do you do with those? Um, plenty of stuff you can do with them. So things like Christmas bingo, which can be quite easy and obvious to set up. Christmas blockbuster from the old uh, blockbuster game. You can get PowerPoints of blockbuster online, a couple of uh, ELT teaching websites, um, if you don't have the time to do it yourself. You can always do Christmas use of English part four if you really oh, want you to do people. <laughs> no, you, you print it out and you threaten it, but you never actually do it. Oh, I, oh, that's no. I've, I've, def I've, I've definitely I've never, I've but not definitely, a, but never. not at Christmas. <laughs> um, I do do. Um, I'm gonna say festive, or, or well, no, I'm gonna say seasonal rather than Christmas because I do it at different points in the year anyway. Um, exam style questions. Um, where again, we're out of the book, but maybe I'll build an entire speaking exam, quote unquote, um, around the around the seasons. I often do it at Halloween at Christmas. 
um, Easter time, you know, and uh, find appropriate pictures for them to discuss for part two. And, um, you know, how do you, you know, what's the best way of celebrating Halloween? And they generate five ideas, and then we do a part three discussion. Um, I'm talking in terms of um, Cambridge Fest certificate activities here. Um, and um, I'll have written a list of uh, questions for part four where they go a bit deeper and discuss some of the maybe issues or some of the um, deeper ideas and themes around the season. Um, and that's really good. Um, but also, I mean, maybe part four is a little bit evil, but I have done sort of word formation and um, more, um, open close exercises um, based around uh, the story of Christmas or the, the background to Halloween or whatever it might be. Um, and actually, they're, they're, it's, it's a good thing to, to do because once you've done it once, I've got my PDFs. Um, so they, they're, they're, yeah, they're there's, always there, valid. There is, there, is a, there is a lot of Christmas and one-off lessons that um, hold on to that stuff, back it up mm. on a server or hard drive somewhere because then you have it every year. Um, and you still always chop and change it anyway. Like. Um, what I like to do with uh, younger ones, especially since they're... Um, you know, learn to spell and stuff. Um, I quite like doing word search generators with prizes. Mm. So um, you don't you don't give them a whole massive word search. So what you do is you divide them up into teams. Normally teams of three, and there's a team captain. So um, they organize it themselves how they want to do parts of the word search, and then they work together as a team, which is quite fun. Um, and then there's prizes to see who gets it done the fastest and that kind of thing. Um, so if anybody is looking, the there's word search generators online, which is quite good. Um, if you uh, check tools.a2zteacherstuff.com, um, they have a word search generator, which you pick the size, you pick the vocabulary, everything you want. Um, works for all kinds of year, works for all times of year, but um, really, really good for um, team word search generators because then they're working as a team and they're doing stuff together. Uh, another one I picked up a couple of years ago is snowflakes in the classroom because everybody likes snowflakes. They're all pretty and they look nice. Uh, so everybody writes out a, uh, or first first you draw a snowflake on a big page. You write your, say, your Christmas list or hopes for the next year on them. Or, you know, you pick the topic, so maybe things you're grateful for this year or what you would like for Christmas or what you've mm -hmm. got everybody else for Christmas, that kind of thing. Uh, so then you color, you cut out your own snowflake, you put your name in the middle, and then you put them together for a class snow blizzard, snow storm, whatever. <laughs> Depend, oh, depending like, on, depending oh, like on the kids, you can, make it as, you can make it as nice or as dramatic as you want. So like last year, we called it a blizzard because we had 12 of them. No, we had 24 of them because I had two classes the same age. Um, all together, um, which was really good. Um, so there was two blizzards in the room, and it was all like things they'd done. We done we done achievements that year because a lot of them had like sport or musical achievements, and some of them had exam achievements. Mm. So we did things we did in two thousand and seven, two thousand eighteen. No, seventeen. What year is this? Eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, that's nice. I really like that. And it's in, it's in the same kind of spirit as my um, my Thanksgiving tree. It's that kind of them making something, expressing something connected with the season, and then it becoming together as a, as a group thing as well. And that's really nice. It's important to, I think we should, before, you know, before we wrap up, I think we should cover this really important topic, which is that, as you said, students stop coming. Um, yeah, Dece December, December and with, June are one really old. weird months. Yeah. Um, you need to be prepared for a full class, but you need to be prepared for two in class. Because <laughs> that's the best it's, thing you can it's, do. It's, equ it's equally a shock when you have some <laughs> one student at four o'clock and then at five o'clock your next group. You have all ten eagerly there. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think I think the important thing um, is being able to grade up and down lessons. Right, I think is a yes. really good thing for experience. I think that's why film English is really good because every what he puts on that website is very open to all ages. You know, there's yeah. the kids will see the funny and the cutesy side of it, where the adults will see the sort of deeper meaning. The teens will mm -hmm. see both. You know, yeah, and they might well be. That, I mean, a lot of them, a lot of the films on there, and again, I like them. Is that there's actually no language in them? Yeah, most of them are just so. like a musical tune. Yeah. 
you know, so you can actually, so the, the language level that you pitch, you just take the, the videos that are ready to go and you just pitch the, pitch the level. I think, yeah, having, um, <coughs> I tend to have like younger learners and teen learners and adult learners lessons, which I can then tweak up and down in terms of level, but also make fit for, for, for one and, and 10. Um, speaking is obviously a great one, but bearing in mind, if you only have one student come to the lesson, <laughs> There's not much speaking that can be done in yeah. terms of student to student. Um, I'm actually going to say something that's in that's in Alan's notes. I'm going to credit it, but they're still paying. Yeah. You um, still yeah you still got to give a quality class, regardless of how many people are there. Exactly. Um, they've come and they've paid, and um, it's. I think that's an important thing to remember about our, about our profession. It's that we are providing a service. We're being paid. Um, the kids. Might only be one or two of them, but their parents have paid and their parents have sent mm -hmm. them to class on the last day of term. You know, therefore, we give them what they would have any other day of the of the year. Um, I used to be um, really novel. I used to work in UK high schools, actually, that we get to the last week of week of a term and, and the students would say, oh, you know, it's last week of term, why aren't we watching a video? You're about to have a fortnight off. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there is a, there is a um, one for everybody to go, oh, come and do a video. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I, and I would be like, well, you might have a fortnight off, you can watch as many videos as you want that you've chosen. Um, <laughs> why would you want to watch a video in school? That's mad. Um, and, um, and also, no, <laughs> this, is, this is one of the weeks where I've got to teach you stuff. Um, you know, I um, think that's um, what's good about film English as well, and the TED Talks and stuff. You can pick things that are three minutes long, but you get a 90-minute class out of mm -hmm. it because there's activities, there's speaking there's, you know, there's plenty of other discussion. I mean, I love doing theatre in the classroom, um, and I love doing storytelling in the classroom, so um, I get a lot of fun with that. You know, design your own adverts and, you know, sell. Here's an, okay, one group, sell this pencil and make an emotional video about it, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, exactly. <clears throat> if you can, and if you can, um, I mean, all these things depend on where you're teaching in terms of your, um, what's the looking for, legal context, but also your, your company context whether mm. you can actually make the video with, on someone's phone and then you can sit and watch all the videos. I've done that kind of thing before, depending yeah. again on the context you're working in. Um, um, whether or not you can, or whether you make it as a radio advert and you listen, and you, you do it as a voice recording. Um, another thing you could do is, depending again on your school, is whether you can team teach, join groups together. We got really lucky. We, we got to do that once before and it was great fun because I think I had, did I have two students and you had three or something? Something like that. They were, they were the same level, so we put them together, and then we took an activity about, um, which was really good fun. I really enjoyed team teaching. Um, yeah, it is fun, and you can play off each other and bounce each other off each other, and it gives the students something a little bit different as well. Yeah. Um, Plus, there's different students in the room <clears throat> to sort of get to know as well. So exactly, um, um, they're all, they're almost the wanting to and... show off to each other. You come to class and find you're, you're one of two and the majority of your mates didn't, didn't bother and it's nice then to say, okay, we're going to go across the corridor, we're going to combine another group, you can meet mm -hmm. some new people and we're going to do some activities that you're not used to because the other teacher uses them yeah. um, and they get, they get something a bit different. And also as a, as a teacher, you can uh, oh, steal um, yeah. good ideas from your, from your <laughs> colleague as well. But that's, but that's something that will depend on, um, on, the, on where you work and whether or not yeah. they're happy for you to do that. Um, also, also, you have to watch your, your class members yeah. um, as well. Um, it's a weird time of year, but there's, a, there's, a, there's always something to get out of it. Um, I, think, I, think, I think, again, I know we've said this before, it's the more experienced you get, you have a, you have a bigger database of stuff to call upon. Like, I have, I have an entire folder here of one-off classes. Um, right. Not not just not just Christmas, just one-off classes. If I just don't feel like using the book, that you know, video yeah. classes, discussion classes, or that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I think that's one of the things that I would say is we uh, maybe we haven't said before, but I would I would urge any less experienced teachers who are listening to do is to. Mm. I mean, yes, your DOS or or whomever is 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 running the the show where you are, but also ask your colleagues. Even if it doesn't matter if they're a year or ten years in the job, they'll have other ideas. But do ask your more experienced colleagues as well, because mm -hmm. they may have they may they may be willing to just pass you a pen drive. Um, <laughs> they might not, <laughs> um, but they but they just might. Um, and you, as a as an individual professional, may not want to use everything or anything that you just take. 
Um, I like to tweak stuff. I like to make stuff fit my personality, yeah. fit my way of teaching. But it's a lot easier when you have something to start with. Yeah. Um, so I think there's there's I one thing for. I mean, obviously, this is this is this is the 9th of December. We're recording this. It'll be online today. But this this podcast will be available forever. Um, for teachers who, when it's not seasonal, and you do want to get kids' heads out of the books or adults' heads out of the books, um, there was a book I got year might have been when I was first year English teacher actually um one of the Cambridge copy collections by um Felicity O'Dell and Katie Head is the games for vocabulary practice now straight away that sounds you hear vocabulary practice people fancy that. um but this is actually a really really good book because it has I don't know how many activities it must have um, well, I'm just I'm just looking at the contents page here. So there's 18 units in the book, and they're all split up in three different levels. So there's a beginner game, there's an intermediate game, and then there's upper intermediate advanced game in it. Um, now I've had this book years, and it is it is photocopyable. It is the Cambridge photocopyable collection. Um, what I'm going to recommend to any teacher who thinks about getting this book: see when you photocopy something and you cut it up. Laminated. <laughs> you know, I I sort of hit my cutting up threshold about October November every year, but but I learned through experience if I just print it out once and then I laminate it once, laminate I it. can I can just keep these in envelopes and they envelopes work all year. in a box yeah. and you've got them whenever you need them. Exactly, exactly. yeah. Um, so this it's it's. Classes, you can get entire two-hour classes out of the activities in it. Um, mm -hmm. It gives you sort of a brief outline um, of what to do with each lesson. Um, and it's really good. Um, I'd highly recommend it for non-seasonal classes where you want to get students' heads out of the books. You can get some of the stuff to last you 15 minutes. You can make it last you a full hour or two hours, whatever you want. Um, it's entirely up to the teacher. Well, well there we are. Um, I hope that's, uh, hope that's given listeners um, some ideas. Um, I think we've to put quite a few um, links in the show notes, um, so you've no need to to rewind and scribble down any of the links you've mentioned. Yeah. Um, and thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks very much. We'll speak to you again. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Fraser Lever Bojas. If you'd like to get in touch, you can tweet us at Fraser V on Twitter. You can email us Fraser Lever Bojas at gmail dot com. You can check out our show notes online at frasierleverbushespodcast.blogspot.com And please like, review and comment us on your podcast subscription service of choice. Goodbye. Goodbye.